ain't nothing I want more. Ain't nothing I want more. They gave us a chance to get in like we asked for, and that's that's what we're here to do. Job still ain't done. Data has quickly become the hottest commodity after microchips. The technology sector has gained nearly 20% in 2023. The tech industry is an American success story. We're going to build economies on our data. Data will become a currency. Data is the new oil. So the expectation would be for the data job market to be booming. It should be easy to break into the industry. But then there's you. You've probably been watching everything related to breaking into the industry doing the courses, tutorials, creating your own portfolio. Some of you even went as far as getting an expensive university degree. But still, nothing has changed. The work you've been doing feels useless. The time you spent learning feels useless. All your job applications to get a new data analyst job, or any data job for that matter, all feels useless. You ask yourself, why do I feel so close yet so far? They asked me for experience to get a job, but how do I get experience without a job? the infamous job market catch 22. Maybe I should just quit. Entry level data analyst jobs are dead. Entry level data jobs are dead. No one ever told me it would. But what if I told you quitting would be your biggest mistake? You see, while it seems to be a lost cause, all that work you've been doing is worthwhile you will be able to break through. And I'll be honest with you, while the odds are definitely not in your favor, growing list of tech giants scaling back at by just applying the information already, already given out there, alongside additional points that I rarely see mentioned anywhere, you'll be more than positioned to get your first job and then some. And the greatest thing about this all is that any of you watching this can do this and achieve this goal. Data is gonna have more value in the future and we're gonna build economies on our data. So if data is so important, why people can't get no job? Well, specifically looking at data analysis, it's a demand and supply problem at its core, which is multifaceted. One part to this is that everyone wants a data related job for a plethora of different reasons, like work life balance, company benefits, higher salaries, already causing demand to be high. But when you also factor in amongst tech roles, or specifically data related roles, Becoming a data analyst from a technical point of view anyways is one of the easiest, if not the easiest, which lowers the barrier to entry, ultimately meaning there will always be large amounts of competition. Another layer to this is that you can find entry level data analyst jobs. Unfortunately, they just don't want junior candidates. You see, for a company to hire someone with minimal experience, they are essentially taking a chance on that person in question as it always goes back to the value proposition how much value you can provide measured by the amount and severity of the problems you can solve. They don't expect much value in the short to medium term because you're not expected to solve many problems without adequate training and experience, which they will need to provide. In a normal situation, this would be okay. But in this economic climate, just confirming that inflation is still too high. There's a need to provide value as soon as you enter a company. Otherwise, they believe they stand to gain nothing, meaning you get a free lunch. And based on company profits and just capitalism as an overall concept, that just won't run. Which actually leads to the elephant in the room, the layoffs. Layoffs are a product of the state of the economy. If you are deemed to not provide enough value, you are disposable. The frequency of job layoffs have an inverse relationship with job adverts. So as the layoffs increase, the supply of job adverts decrease. All these points mentioned encapsulates what I like to call the entry-level data analyst trilemma. These issues act as gatekeepers stopping people breaking into the industry, but by at least taking away one side or issue of the trilemma, this allows people to make their way through and obtain jobs more easily. Though this raises an even larger question based on one of the issues. If there are data analyst jobs, entry-level data analyst jobs being posted, and these roles are of course being filled, then who exactly is successfully obtaining these roles? Might sound like a cop-out answer, but it's those that are able to prove and will be able to provide value. The main group of people that are forward in this category being those who already have real-world experience. But the reality is that why are people with experience applying for entry-level roles? One answer that logically stands out is that people currently have limited choice. 
Reality is that despite the layoffs, life goes on. People still need income to provide for themselves and their family. Bills don't stop, which leaves overqualified personnel needing to take lower paid positions until the market picks up again or stay jobless with no income. So if you're an individual trying to make your first step into the industry, you have to compete against people you really have no chance against. All really feeling like a rigged game for any party that's actually trying to get a role as experienced people are not getting what they're worth and aspiring juniors had no chance and they didn't even know. But of course, the companies win. However, the use of the entry level data analyst trilemma mentioned earlier details that being able to take away at least one of the issues or sides denoted, which should be the one that of course you actually have control over, which out of the three is that companies don't want to hire juniors or people that won't be able to provide value from day one. So I guess the real question is, how do you provide value or better yet prove to an employer you'll be able to provide value and so of course will be suitable for the data analyst role? It's a simple answer, but be different to everybody else. You see, everybody goes through learning the same skills and tools essential to data analysis of course, starts creating projects that fit into their personal portfolio and starts to create or make their job applications waiting and wishing for them to be picked up. But if you think about it like this, with limited budget that companies now have, more experienced candidates also apply for the same roles that you are. And unfortunate to say, but the risk that there's more potential economic woes on the horizon. Would you employ you? Probably not, right? And this is not to make anybody feel bad, but this is just to understand that you should still do, of course, the essential parts of the learning process, but add a few additional parts to ensure that you stand out and so, of course, are suitable for the entry level role. One way to do this is by using data analyst certifications. Obtaining certifications prove a candidate's ability to use a tool or language. So of course proves to an employer that a candidate will be able to add value sooner rather than later if they were given the role. And of course this helps with applications going forward. This also helps with the interview process as by trying to keep up to date and of course learn and be prepared for the exam you are going through potential questions that will also be asked within your interviews. There are many different certifications you can obtain, but the two that I would recommend above all the others would be the Power BI one and the Tableau one. I haven't given you the full names because they're kind of longer. We don't have time for that. But the reason why I've said those two, you know, before or above everything else is because they're actually desirables that I've seen requested in job applications. I've actually got a video that I made on obtaining the Power BI certification, so the PL300. So if you're interested in that, and of course want to do the same, then there's a link in the description. Next is by actually obtaining tangible real world experience. And I know you're probably thinking, but if I could get experience, I would. That's the whole point of this video. And I get that. But this is where, while you're waiting for that full-time role, sites like Upwork and Freelancer have people that are waiting and wanting people with data analysis knowledge. So this is where you would take it upon yourself to go on these sites, make of course an account and start looking at these jobs, these roles. Roles in question I'm actually talking about are ones that are 12 hours long, one day long, two days long at most. So very, very small tasks that of course don't really pay that well. But of course the point of them is to get actual real world experience alongside the portfolio you're probably making in the background. And of course this can be put on your CV and can be discussion points in your interviews going forward. The great thing about this all is that as you take on more of these small tasks that don't pay well, you can start getting better tasks, bigger tasks that pay more. Start taking on tasks and projects that are more complex. And this is leading to the next point of now working on 
more demanding projects. In a previous video of mine, I briefly mentioned how a friend and myself took on a task to create an app as a project to do different styles of analysis across the cryptocurrency market alongside visualizations. And while I would say the app definitely wasn't successful, it did really challenge me in learning new things that I had no familiarity of within Python. This is because while of course using libraries like Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib to do the essential parts of data analysis, this also required me to take on learning new libraries like WebSockets to of course connect to a Binance API to stream live data. And of course you can do things like this as well. I would take it as working on a project that may be something you're passionate on or things that you're interested in. I actually saw a great video a while back where it was looking at how the Simpsons are able or if they're actually able to predict the future. And in this video, they try to prove this hypothesis by looking at different episodes within the Simpsons, predictions that were made, and of course, if it actually amounted to anything, alongside speaking to professors from different universities, etc. So this is an example of taking something you're interested in, and of course, creating a whole video project alongside some data science elements to this. And of course, if you didn't want to do anything like this, you could, of course, just take on demanding projects on the freelance websites that I mentioned alongside some additional ones that you can find online as well. Jobs you apply for should also be looked at. When I was initially trying to break into the industry, I was really getting annoyed because I wasn't getting any interviews. And that's because of the roles I was applying for. When I changed from applying from roles like this to roles like this, I started to get interviews and of course made my way through. And this is because a graduate scheme, while showed on screen, is easier to obtain because the competition generally is, of course, graduates, new graduates from university. So all have a similar amount of work experience. Now, of course, this is also similar to applying for traineeships or training programs alongside internships. And other creators also use this to start their career. So of course, you've got more than one case where this actually worked. And that's when I started this IT management traineeship in Amsterdam, which was basically the start of my career as a data analyst. I feel a point that's neglected is utilizing your current experience. Any sector you work in, means that you're acquiring and have domain knowledge. Whether this is healthcare, retail, education, construction, and this allows you to have specialized knowledge that other candidates won't have. So example, if you're going to apply for a healthcare data analyst role, by having that healthcare knowledge, you are more valuable than another candidate that will need to learn that specific knowledge on job. So of course it allows you to stand out. I use this to my advantage when applying for roles because I had experience in heating, ventilation and air conditioning from my engineering background. Course heating, ventilation and air conditioning being part of construction made it easier for me to look at roles within the construction world which landed me a graduate scheme within a construction consultancy. So don't neglect your past experience. Utilize it as it's an advantage, an unfair advantage that many people might not have. And finally, get going. Keep going. Kick, push, kick, push, kick, push. Even while doing everything I've mentioned alongside the things that you already know, it will make the job process easier, but still it won't be easy. So you will need to kick, push through the applications, through the work, through the interviews. But I know with this, you will land a job. Start your journey as a data analyst. And if you're anything like me, with this all, I know your change will be televised. They gave us a chance to get in like we asked for, and that's, that's what we're here to do. Job still ain't done, but I, I said, you, you know what I'm here for. We're trying to get in, we, our work ain't done yet, but we're fighting fight for it. As always, thank you for watching. If you found any of this valuable, then definitely leave me a like. Consider subscribing, of course, as well. And until next time, take care, stay blessed, and...
Peace.